surprise, surprise. You expect Matthew here tonight, but he's not able to be with us. And uh, we're going to study a little bit, and we're going to go home. Probably won't last quite as long as usual, but that's all right. And I appreciate that song. That's good, Lord. And that's a good uh, song to start off on. And uh, Welcome to Wednesday night prayer meeting, by the way. And I uh, thought a lot about prayer meeting yesterday and today and about what it means and about what uh, what it should mean and, and what it, what it used to mean. In Isaiah chapter 56 and, and verse 7, uh, it's a little thing here about the house of prayer. It says, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. And and I thought about prayer meeting on a Wednesday night. And, and, you know, lots of folks, but you can see as you look around you, lots of folks don't think it's too important. Lots of folks don't see a, a real need for that, and uh, they ain't got time for that. they got other things going on, or they're too tired, and, and I understand. I understand some of those things do happen, and, and sometimes we can't make it. Uh, Brother, Brother Petey can't be here tonight. Uh, but as a whole, I hope to, to, to look at some things tonight that would tell us and show us that prayer meeting's important. And not just uh, another service, or not just something that, you know, was brought up a long time ago and it's lost its effectiveness, but it's, it's something that we need as brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, one thing I thought about, the house of prayer. And there's even some, some buildings, I've seen churches before, that was the name of the church on the side, said house of prayer. No thing wrong with that. Even the Lord here said that uh, he would put his name there on the temple and and he would meet with his people there and they would bring their sacrifices and he would hear from heaven and he would bless them there and, and it would be called a house of prayer. And, and uh, nothing makes this house of prayer more important than uh, when things go wrong. Uh, you ever known anybody that never thought about prayer, never talked about the Lord, or never, uh, never anything said about, you know, you, you might hear some things you don't want to hear out of their mouth, or you might hear some things uh, said that you'd wish they hadn't shared with you or maybe some things that you know off color this or that but then when things go wrong maybe somebody's sick and in the hospital you first thing you see is them on facebook saying i appreciate it if you could pray for my brother so-and-so or my cousin so-and-so it's important then isn't it yeah. and i thought about prayer meetings that we have and and i thought how important they are and how much we realize when, when you can feel those prayers. You're laying in the hospital maybe or you're back home and you're not doing as well as you thought you'd be and, and you begin to feel just something that's different. And it's the prayers of the children of God. We don't think much about Wednesday night, I don't. Got, got to go to church tonight, it's Wednesday night. Which that's our mentality. We got to. Let's change that around and say we get to. We get to go to church. I, I wore my Bible school hat tonight. I think still thinking about Bible school and about getting to go to that and, and enjoying that and, and what a blessing it was. And, and here we are tonight, prayer meeting. What a blessing. So as we feel those prayers and we realize people are praying for us and we realize they really do work, uh, it changes things. Changes how we look at it. Prayer changes things and it changes us, the ones that are doing the praying. I look at people a whole lot different when I begin to pray for them. Have you noticed that? You pray for them and you think about what a difference they could make if they just turn around and start going for God as strong as they're going for the devil. And God can do that. And he can do it through our prayers. And so many times, I throw up my hands. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Uh, the only thing I can do, I, I can't, they ain't going to listen to me, or I, ain't, I can't, 
I don't have that good a relationship with them. I can't talk to them. Or I've tried talking to them. I'm going to give up. What's the least thing I can do? That's, wait a minute. It's the most thing we can do. Prayer. Prayer. The most thing we can do. It changes things. All right. We want to go on over to Mark chapter. Was it chapter 11? Dylan. I believe. Yeah, here's my mark. Mark chapter 11 and verse 17 says, And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, and he's talking about Isaiah that we just wrote about, read about there, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And this is where he was turning over the money changing tables, I believe, and he was uh, setting some things right. And uh, he was cleaning the house. And he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And the things that they were doing were necessary. I mean, you know, there were a lot of people that came to Jerusalem that didn't, didn't bring a sacrifice animal with them. So to be able to buy one, whether it be at the door or wherever, you know, would be convenient, you know. You, do you remember the first time you went to a convenience store and, and bought a drink? <laughs> I mean, I did that the other day. I was thirsty, and I didn't didn't have a another, and I wasn't going home, and I, I just needed to stop in and get a drink. $2.66 later, I had a, a, well, I think it was just 10 ounces what I bought, but my goodness. How many two liters could I have bought? Not too long ago. You probably can't get but one now. But that was the thing that was going on there. They were doing a service, yes, but they were getting paid a big price. They was getting that convenience fee in there. And the Lord said, that ain't right. When we come on Wednesday night, are we doing business? Are we thinking about tomorrow's job site or, or getting to work on time or, or what we got to do tomorrow or what we accomplished today? Are we doing business in our head? Or are we thinking about you know, getting a bowl of ice cream when we get home. What are we thinking about? We need to be focused on prayer, doesn't it? We need to be focused on Him. Uh, one of the other things I thought about was the prayer list. We've got a prayer list, and, and we bring it up every Sunday, and we let it scroll through, and, and it comes around pretty quickly. And, and we talk about it once in a while, the ones on our prayer list. <laughs> And, and I'm, I'm bad, too. I, I'll say these kind of things. I'll say, Lord, bless all those I need to pray for. And all those kinds of things, that's kind of a token, isn't it? It wouldn't be bad to get that prayer list out here and read it on Wednesday night. And maybe ask some folks, have you heard from them lately? What's the situation like? And maybe get some praise reports or something. We, we could get some, some things going on. I know when Brother Roger was here, he would bring in missionaries we wouldn't just send money but he'd bring them in and they'd give a talk you know maybe even bring their family and you'd get to understand what you were giving money for because he'd tell you all about or they would all about the mission and what was going on and what they were facing it's kind of the same way when you you really learn about that prayer request you learn about what's going on and how sick they are or what they've tried you know like the, the woman that had the issue of blood. She spent all her money and went to every doctor in the whole country and couldn't find any help. She needed prayer, didn't she? There's several on our prayer list. I don't even know who they are, probably. I do try to look at it occasionally, but I'm guilty. I'm just saying, prayer is a serious thing. And in the house of prayer, we need to get, get serious about it. All right. Have you ever heard this saying? And this is a thing back in my younger days. When I was growing up, I heard this some. Said a whole lot about some people. Ah, oh, they're just going up there to see and be seen. You ever heard that? Want to see and be seen. Well, you know what? That ain't the reason to come. And that ain't why we're here tonight. And it's all about Jesus and all about prayer. But that see and be seen is a fringe benefit. It's, a, it's a, something that takes place 
whether we want to or not. I'm going to see you here, and you're going to see me here, and I want to tell you something. Our children need to see us here praying, worshiping. Our coworkers need to know that we're here. Then people driving by on the road need to know there's something going on out there. The lights are on. You see that? I'm surprised they had church tonight. Look at that. You wouldn't think, but little things like that, they weigh on a person's mind. People need to see us. All right, the other part of that was to see, right? See and be seen. Well, I need to come and see how you're doing. First of all, I, I, I love all of you, and I want to see you as my friends, but if you've got a prayer request, I want to hear about it. And I want to see how you're progressing through the problem you talked to me about last week or two weeks ago. Or have you heard from so-and-so? And it goes on and on and on. It's a, something that really builds on itself. To see and be seen. I thought about that a lot. But most of all, we want to see our Savior in this word right here. We want to see him as we bow to him. And we want to be seen of him in, a, in our obedience, in our calling on him, and our looking to him. We need to know our, each other's situations. You know, some, sometimes there's people in church or sometimes there's things going on. I believe Brother Jeff was mentioning a while ago his son sick this morning and he didn't even know about it. Took him on to work and, and turned out he was sick and he came home after an hour or two. And, and his, his brother that he was actually working for, he said, I didn't know what was going on. So there's things in our church that we don't even know is going on and we don't have any idea what to pray for. We don't even have any idea... And, you know, we're all, all of us are the same. Oh, they're going to judge me if I tell them about that. Or they're going to say, you know, think the worst if I tell them, leave that in God's hands. Don't worry about it. But when we share, and I thought about that a whole lot too, some preachers and, and even some, Brother Petey's pretty, pretty good at that at, at work, we We'll talk about something a little bit in, in passing and, and just a thought and throw it out at each other. And, and pretty soon he's coming back with another scripture. And pretty soon he's got another scripture that lays on top of that one and supports it. And it all goes on and on and on, and it all ties together. And that's the way our prayers do, I believe. We lay one on top of another, and, and we hold each other up, and we love each other through our prayers, and we, and we show our, our care and our love. And we get concerned. It's hard to, to not like somebody if you're praying for them. And, and there lots of times we come to church and we got that old attitude going, you know, our, mouth, our, frown, our smile's upside down and we're, we're saying, Lord, bless me if you can or whatever it is we've got on our mind this day. But then when you give, begin to pray about some, something or somebody and you begin to think about the prayer request and the th things that are going on for prayer, and you can't help but have a little bit of smile going on because you're thankful for what God's already done, what he's going to do, and what he promised. Aren't you glad for his promises? All right, I told you this wasn't going to take too long. My last thought, last couple of thoughts here, I forgot now, I didn't really look it up, but there is a place there Paul writes about down by the river where they were want, prayer would want to be made, and I believe it's some women, a seller of purple. And they were down there uh, worshiping, I believe. But when there's prayer going on, there's worship, I believe. You can't have one without the other, hardly. But they were down there, and the world's got this standpoint, and we get it pretty easily built into our attitude, too. Well, I can pray at home. I can worship at home just as good. And they were, they were praying down by the river. They, didn't, they wouldn't at the temple. And you could look at that and say, well, look at there. You don't have to be at church. Well, that's right. Lots of, lots of prayer meetings go up and, and, and revivals and church services in somebody's house or out on the street corner or wherever it might be. 
But the thing that doesn't change is there's more than one person there. Down by the river, they were, they were there, and there was prayer was want to be made. And all these different house gatherings or street corners or wherever it's at, it's always more than one. And I believe that's the answer to tonight. That's why we come on Wednesday nights. That's why we come on Sundays because together we're stronger. Together we, we lift up a, a greater worship and a greater praise and a, and a greater uh, sweet smell, I believe, of our worship. And if a bunch of Baptists can come together in peace and harmony and get together and, and quit arguing and backbiting and all that and get all that behind us and shut out the door and praise the Lord and worship, something doesn't happen then. And it changes our whole attitude, just mine. And that Wednesday night just kind of boosts you up and you're ready to figure out the rest of the week then. And you realize... I'm not in this alone. That's what, that's what all these testimonies and prayer, prayer requests do too is, is they tell us that we're, we're not the only one fighting this battle. We're not the only one that's do, having the problems that we have. We're not the only one in the struggle. We're not the only one God's blessing. And we're not the only one that needs a little energy boost during the week. So first of all, I want to praise him tonight. Praise him for answered prayer. Praising for a time and a place that we can come and pray. We're still free. There's nobody standing with a gun at the door. They had not burned it down yet. Praise the Lord for that. I read something today that said that um, we might ought to uh, enjoy our 4th of July celebration because if we didn't do it right in November, it might be the last one we ever had. You never know. You never know. But let's pray. Let's get serious about it. And I'm talking to John more than I am anybody else. But let's know what we're, who we're praying for. Let's know what the situation is. It's kind of like going in the voting booth. Who was that? <laughs> I've, never, I've never seen that person. Ever. They're Republican. No, I guess I'll vote for them. They're, who's that on the prayer list? I, I don't know who that is. I'll pray for them now. We need to, we need to get informed, don't we? You didn't know who we're talking about when we're talking about somebody to the Lord.